is Shai Schmetzer, I'm part of the Oracle Visual Builder team, and in this demonstration we're going to show you how to do test-driven development with Visual Builder. In this demonstration I'm going to show you how to build test cases for actions that you have in your Visual Builder application. We're going to use this form over here, and um, this form has a button that calculates a bonus. Um, so first of all, if you're not a manager and you click this, you'll see that you don't get a bonus. Okay. If you are a manager, um, it depends on which department you're working in. For example, if you're working in support and you click Calculate Bonus, you'll see that your bonus would be 2200 um, when you start with 2000 uh, If you're in marketing on the other way hand and you click Calculate, you won't get bonus that is higher, you'll get 2000 So. Let's see how this actually works. We have the button, the button has an event, and the event has our action chain. What we're doing here is we're checking if um, the employee is a manager. Okay, if it's not, then we fired up this message you saw of you don't get a bonus. Okay, if you are a manager, we're going over and we're calling a REST service to get information about the department you're in. Okay, uh, passing in the department ID. Uh, we get the results which include the maximum uh, salary for this department and then we pass this to a JavaScript function here. So we're passing the current salary of the employee and the maximum salary of the department. Then we have the JavaScript function over here. Very simple, looks if the salary is lower than the max salary then you're getting a 1.1 .1 time your salary, otherwise you get the normal salary. And um, that's basically the business logic here. And then we let you know what your bonus would be based on the results from this function. So this is our action chain. Again, not too complex. Um, it's just for a sample to show you how to use the test capabilities. So when you go over and you create a new test, um, the first thing that we'll do is we'll notice which variable are being used in your application, in your action chain and which REST calls you have uh, and we'll ask you to provide us some information about those. So for example, in our page I have a variable called employee with all sorts of information about the employee. I need to provide a sample of how this would look like. Okay, So I'm going to pick up a sample of the structure of information I have about an employee. Copy this over here, put it inside curly brackets because it's an object and this would be my sample for information about an employee. Then when I fetch a department, I'm also getting a response. Again, I'll pick up this response about the department and place it as the body that is returned on successful execution of the REST service. Now that I have those two input components, I can get suggestions about what values I might check. So what is actually happening here is that Visual Builder is executing your action chain based on this information and is going to evaluate and see which things uh, are going to be um, the result of those values. So we can see basically the suggestions that were passed in, okay, so um, for example, we're going to get a result of uh, 5,500 as the bonus, okay? And we can then decide which things we want to check. For example, if we wanted to check that indeed um, the uh, calculation that we're doing in the model function returns this, we can add this test, okay? And then we can see this turned into blue, meaning that we're testing this part of the code, okay? And um, we can also uh, look at the um, uh, check manager outcome, which is this part, and make sure that it returns two because we passed in an employee who is a manager. And this way we can turn on various things here. I'm going to click add all to add all of this line of code. Okay, And this is the line of code that is being executed based on the parameters that we passed in. You can see that right now we're covering about 53% of the scenario. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate and create another test case, okay? This time, inside the variable, I'm going to pass an employee who's not a manager. So we'll turn this one into false, okay? Like that. We can remove the expectation that we had before because we don't expect those to be here anymore. 
and instead let's get some suggestions about the possible scenarios uh, in this case of someone who's not a manager. Okay, in this case we're going to go to the no bonus flow over here. So let's add all of those into this test case and now we have this flow defined. Okay, and there's still one more flow that is not defined which is what happens if we are um, getting an error from the REST service. So let's pick up again this one, duplicate it, okay, and then we can say um, in this case, this time instead of returning a success we're going to return a failure. Okay, we can then remove these options here and get new suggestions for what happens when we are a manager but we're failing this call to the REST service. Okay, we're supposed to get this error message and we can add this into the case case. Now we're at a hundred percent of our code coverage. Okay, again you might want to check other options and add additional tests. Another thing to know is that you can always rename your test. So this would be for example failure in REST and this might be a um, manager with 5k salary. Okay, so something like that. And now you can run all the tests and see whether your code passes your tests. And again, this is again test driven development. You know what you expect and you get the results over here. This will become very useful when someone later on might change code in your application. For example, what happens if someone goes into our JavaScript function and changes the code over here to return 1.2? Next time that you would run your test cases, most of them would succeed, but the test case that actually goes through this step, okay, would fail, as we can see here. And when we click on it, we can see exactly which test failed, what we expected to get, what we actually got, and then we can know that, hey, someone broke in our tests, uh, we need to fix it. So this was an introduction to test automation with Visual Builder.